introduce yourself first, Jess? Yes. Uh, my name is Jess Bernberg. I am a freelance theatre lighting designer, um, mainly working in drama and new writing and devised work um, in and around the UK. And how did you get into all of it? Uh, kind of like a lot of people um, in our in the kind of emerging designer scene. I, I started at school, so I was planning on going to art college um, to do a foundation and was working in art galleries and realised that I really didn't like it and it was a bit um, dry and not very collaborative. And then I went to a really great stick form that had a theatre in it and someone had donated an old ion. Um, I never found out who donated it actually. Um, and started pressing buttons so I could bunk off lessons, uh, which was really fun. And there was a really great uh, guy called Martin who was the head of stage and he used to work in rock and roll touring. Um, and was like yeah you can you could probably do this as a as a career like I did so why not and I was like oh cool never really thought about that um so decided to go to drama school so I went to Guildhall School of Music and Drama in London um where you also went Jack yeah indeed and uh I was also producing theatre for a while so while I was at sixth form I met someone uh, who was a playwright and we, she would write plays and I would produce them and we took them up to the Edinburgh Fringe, um, which was a really, really good experience of what it takes to actually put on a piece of theatre. Uh, knowing how much time and money goes into the pre-production of it is uh, very humbling. And I did a lot of Arts Council applications uh, really badly, never successful. <laughs> because I'm a terrible producer. Um, I basically just wanted to make shows that I could light because it's a really hard thing to start doing. And I met some interesting people through the kind of fringe scene who I went on to light shows with. Brilliant. It sounds like <laughs> lockdown's going well then. Going really well, I'm making a jumper. <laughs> Very cool. It's a, whole, it's a whole damn jumper now. Look at that. That is incredible. I'll give you, yeah, fair play. Maybe, um, maybe this lighting design thing doesn't work. I'll I'll become a jumper maker. Yeah, charge per hour. Get you for a few more questions if that's okay. So, do you program your own shows, or do you have a programmer? Uh, so I learnt to program before I really knew what design was at my sit form. So I spent a lot of time programming my own shows in the fringe, um, which I really loved doing. Actually, I was thinking about maybe becoming a programmer. Um, I'm quite quick, although I don't know. It's not. Um, it's not really for me. I think I discovered, but uh, it kind of has petered out how much I need to program. Um, it just depends on the scale of the place that you're working. Really, like if they can afford a programmer, I'll always have one because it means that I don't have to think about all the complicated stuff, which I do enjoy doing. Um, but it's really nice to just have a whole person that's there for you that you can communicate with and they can go and make all the complicated things for you usually a lot better than I can. And you don't have your head in a screen. I find it really difficult to communicate with a team. Even if you're like sitting next to the sound designer, if you've got like hands on and five screens in front of you, it's a lot harder to be able to just shout at the director and say, what do you think of this? Um, Yes, so I probably program about uh, like thirty percent of my shows at the moment. Last year was probably more like fifty percent. Year before that was like a hundred percent. But always, I would say always ask uh, because I worked at the Bush Theatre a couple of years ago for the first time, and um, it was a transfer of a show that we made in a community hall. So I'd programmed it really badly because we didn't have very much time um and at the end of tech they went oh so how was your programmer and nobody had told me that I was assigned a programmer so that would have saved me a whole world of pain um so if in doubt always ask at the beginning of a process <laughs> try and get it in your contract as well it's very useful and would you ever pay out of your own fee if you could to have a programmer come in for you 
I wouldn't because I think as designers we don't get paid enough for the work that we do anyway um I'm quite lucky in the fact that I'm I'm quite good at it um and I think it kind of doesn't devalue the industry but but um but I don't think it's fair I don't know both to the programmer and and to the designer uh I think it's really important that um venues are aware that it's something that we need uh, and we should kind of try and keep pushing for it as a as a standard that's brilliant thank you what's been your favorite show you've ever done uh i have a really specific show Ooh. that i did um about uh six, nine months after i graduated called buggy baby at the yards i talk about it all the time and whenever I go for a meeting with anyone, they're always like, oh, you did that show. Uh, it was by Josh Azuz um, at the Yard Theatre in London, directed by Ned Bennett, designed by Max Johns, who, um, and sound designed by Charles Thomas, who are all collaborators that I still work with now. And it was an amazing show. I'd never worked at the Yard before, and it's, um, they're building a new building, hopefully, uh, at the moment. Um, and it's a really amazing creative space where they just let you do what you want and try things out and it was built as a temporary building so you can kind of have a lot of fun with the space and it's very specific it's like got cream walls and ceiling and wood everywhere and it's very impractical for cross light and blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm pretty sure that the, there's no safe working load on anything so I um, really kindly some people at Chauvet lent me some demo stock um, and I had these like whacking great uh, Maverick Mark III washers that we couldn't put in the rig because they were too heavy. So we ratchet strapped them to balconies and it was absolutely ridiculous. But the show, like, um, there are a lot of really surreal aspects of it. And the team were really, like, Ned, the director, really trusted me to just do whatever I wanted and be really bold and, like, be really colourful. Um I was recommended to him actually by Elliot Griggs because we'd met uh, at a lighting lunch after I'd won the Francis Reed Award because Elliot had won that a few years ago and Elliot couldn't do the show even though he usually works with Ned. Um, and we just got on, which is lucky because I think I was quite drunk when we met <laughs> and he put me forward for it. Um, and I'm really, really grateful for that. And I think that's something really wonderful about our industry is that we'll always pass it on to someone if we think that we like their work or we like their way of working. Um, it's quite friendly like that, I think. Um, would you say most of your jobs come from that sort of uh, being recommended in person or do you still get them online as well? Pretty much exclusively recommended or kind of mostly now people seeing seeing my work and saying that they like my style also people talk about websites being really important as in someone will say oh have you seen their work and then they'll go on your website and see if they like the kind of general vibe so having good pictures on your website is really helpful um your website is the most colorful thing i think i've ever seen <laughs> i redesigned it and i really hate it and i'm gonna I'm actually going to spend the rest of the day redesigning it again because it looks like a child's made it. But oh, yes, it. it's really it's right. <laughs> Oh, good. It's a bit shonky. It's just made on Wix. Um, but yeah, I think it's really nice that you can like show a bit of your personality through it. Something that I wish uh, someone had told me when I was at drama school slash just graduated was that you don't have to get it right first time. I spent so long agonizing over lighting plans being like it has to be perfect and it's all happening in your imagination like you can't possibly know how that light is going to look on that piece of scenery on that person or in that color and like the reason we have tech periods is to try things and to get it wrong and to see what works and to just throw things at the wall and see what sticks and I think like put as much as you can onto a plan that you think might be helpful but at the end of the day it's all it's all going to change in tech and you have hopefully have a preview period where you can try stuff as well and it's not like it's not worth kind of agonizing about getting it perfect until until you see it in the space anyway unless you go work in Germany and they'll build you 
a set first for you to try things on. So I'm learning German. <laughs> that's very interesting. No, I think that's some good reassurance to people that they can try it out and learn a bit as well. Exactly. I've learned everything I know uh, just by trying it in the space. I barely assisted or associated, um, which I think is annoying, but uh, I'm trying to just go and hang out with other designers and see what they're up to now, which is good because you get a bit stuck in your own head. Um, so I think like a lot of the things that you would learn as, as an assistant or an associate, seeing other people do like try things and asking questions. I didn't get a huge amount of time to do that. Um, so I learned a lot of it by just trying it and seeing what works. <laughs> you said you about drawing plans and things. So what do you normally draw on? I have Vectorworks 2018. It was very expensive. Uh, but I got a graduate discount if you email them at Vectorworks. They knock like 500 quid off the price. Um, and I went to one of their webinars last week. They've made a load of webinars for free and they sent a follow up email and asked some questions. And they said they might, I think they might be doing sneaky little um, upgrades for people at the moment because they know that we're all poor. Um, yeah, I think Vectorworks is a, like a pretty important tool. I think a lot of set designers will draw on AutoCAD and SketchUp and it imports really well and really easily. Um, I do a lot of my plans in 3D because I think quite 3D as most of us do, um, which really helps. I've spent a lot of time in lockdown remaking my symbols. So downloading SketchUp symbols and uh, making them nice 2D, 3D hybrids that have nice color codes. <laughs> um, because it's the type of stuff that you don't really get time for to like make your plans really nice. And I've built myself a new title block. <laughs> so it's all very exciting. <laughs> do you ever use a visualizer or do you not tend to? No, I don't really believe in them. Uh, I don't think for what I make, which is very atmosphere based, um, one uh, with the shows that I make you don't make until tech anyway so there's not a huge amount of point of visualizing I do a lot of mood boarding on Pinterest and if I have time I like to collage because I'm a GCSE art student uh, and um, yeah I find visualizers very stale and not very representational representative um, so I'd rather just talk to someone about it but I know there are like Capture Polar is really good and um, ETC desks now have a visualizer built in. Is that all right. Yeah, they do. It's only just been released, but I haven't had a chance to play with it. Have you, Jack? Sorry, I muted myself there. Uh, no, I haven't either. Uh, I think it'd be fun too, but also um, I just use Capture if it ever comes to it. Capture's yeah, Jack Ryan showed me it once and I went. Uh, technical and ran away. <laughs> what would you say was the biggest challenge you faced after finishing Guild Hall? Uh, I think it would be learning how a process works. Uh, at Guild Hall, I don't know how it is with other drama schools, but they expressed a lot about how it was a real world experience and these shows are really representative of the outside world. Um, and I started working and it was super collaborative and you weren't just a lighting designer, you were a theatre maker that happens to specialise in lighting, which is what I'd always wanted, but I didn't really know how to go about doing that. And I didn't really, we didn't have previews at Guildhall um, and I didn't really realise how a preview process works. So we started changing stuff in previews and I was terrified. Um, yeah, so just, I think, learning how to communicate with different directors and designers and their different processes and how that is completely different to an educational environment. And it always, always will be because um, people work in different ways and yeah. Uh, what advice would you have for uh, a young designer or technician who's just leaving, going out into theatre? Uh, see as much as you can. See anything and everything be it what you're interested in or 
you're not, go and see dance, go and see opera, go and see mime, go and see physical, circus, anything you can get your hands on. Poetry, doesn't matter if it's a visual or not. Um, just like find out what you want to make because you might leave a drama school, leave an apprenticeship school, whatever, um, going, oh, I think I want to do this. Um, let's send lots of emails. Uh, but like go and explore. And if you like something, try and contact the people that have made it and be like, I really like this. Can we have a chat? And don't ask them for a job because they're probably not going to give you a job because they don't know you, but they might keep in contact. And then you might kind of go and work with some people that you met doing a like get in somewhere and start working with them. And then you can show people your work and you can start to build up a portfolio of like smaller things. And then I think keeping relationships with people whose work you really like is really important. Um, and uh, yeah, I think speaking to directors and designers whose work you admire, whatever level they're on, um, is really important. Cause that's like, I think the way to get jobs is to get on with people creatively and just to go for coffee with them and be like, oh, we stylistically really sync up. And I think, and that's, I think that's why people employ you because they go, I think your mind would be really helpful on this project. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. I think um, as, a, as a final thing, um, don't think of yourself as a lighting designer. Think of yourself as a creative person or an artist or a theatre maker or whatever you want to be because I don't like I think the way we make theatre at the moment is really collaborative and it's really exciting that we have these specialisms but uh, we're entitled to all of the elements of making a show and that's really exciting. Amazing thank you Jess. Yeah thank you very much Jess.